This afternoon, we'll be witnessing the official signing of the contract between the government of Dominica and the contractor, Millennium Land Development Company Limited, for the implementation of the Mount Prospect Primary School Security and Sport Facility Upgrade. And this will be undertaken under the Basic Need Trust Fund 9 program. And the purpose of the program is seeking to ensure that we produce a safer, more secured, and enhanced learning and teaching environment for both student and staff. And indeed, that is keeping in with the hallmark of the Basic Needs Trust Fund, which is all about enhancing the well-being and quality of life of the beneficiaries. And so this afternoon, you'll get a better overview of the goals and objective of the BNTF program in keeping with government mandate in improving the wellness and social prosperity of our people. And that will be done by the project manager, Mr. Carrick. At this point, it is my distinguished pleasure and honor to call to the podium the chairperson of the Mount Prosper Village Council, Ms. Rhys Myers, to give us a welcome. It is my pleasure to stand here today to welcome you to the beautiful village of Mount Prosper. I am happy to be standing here today for the, to see the, the, the launching of this project, the contract signing of the project, because the water source in Mount Prosper, it has been terrible for years, and I know the community and everybody in Mount Prosper will be happy that this project is coming to fruition. And also the fencing of the school, it will bring some security to the, to the teachers and also to the students of the school. So I am very happy to be standing here today for this project. And I just want to say again, welcome to Mount Prosper, the vegetable basket of Dominica. <laughs> At that point, I wish to call on the project manager for BNTF, Mr. Matthew, to give us an overview of the BNTF program and of course this project, Mr. Matthew. As I stand here today and I reflect on this contract signing, it brings to mind what BNTF is all about. And part of the mandate of BNTF is to have this integrated approach to community development. Seeing ways and means that we can create a more holistic project. And I say this against the background that when the project was first submitted to BNTF, for funding under the BNTF 7 project, it was submitted together with five other primary schools as a fencing project. The project was called Primary School Fencing Project, which included six schools, which comprises of six schools, including one prospect. As time, ev and as time evolved, and we got were that the other fencing would not be done on the BNTF. The focus was then on the Mount Prospect Primary School. There was a lot of consultation. There were visits from the Caribbean Air Development Bank. And then we decided, after a lot of consultation, what else can be done to enhance the integrity of that project. And the project was changed from just the fencing of the primary school to what we have here today, a much enhanced project, the Mount Prospect Primary School Security and Sports Facility upgrade. In 2014, the estimated cost of the fencing was just about $230,000. And this afternoon, we'll be signing a contract in excess of $540,000. So you will appreciate how the project has grown you know, 
from the fencing police. One of the things that we discussed in conceptualizing this new project is what ways can we build up the community relationships in Mount Prospect? One thing that we are aware of, which happens in Mount Prospect, as in some other communities, is that the school compound, the school playing ground, is often the communal playing ground. This happens a lot. So how best do we create that harmony in the community where everybody can benefit? So against this background, we have created to focus not only on the youth in schools, but the youth in the community, and give them an enhanced playing facility. So here's the change in scope. I want to say to the community, you know, thanks for your patience, but you will agree that what you are getting today, or what you will be getting, is a much more enhanced product than just fencing of the primary school. So essentially, the project includes installation of boundary fence, chain link fence, to completely enclose the primary school and preschool from the community facilities. It involves construction of reinforced concrete block walls with the chain link fence on top. There's a playing ground, and we are also going to upgrade that playing area and give it its own fencing. And a large portion of this project involves the upgrading of the basketball court. So what you see now is going to be totally upgraded. The contractors will apply a bonding agent to the existing surface, and they intend to apply a five-inch coat of concrete and complete it before wooden coat. So you are going to see a much enhanced paint facility. There will be other things like construction of concrete benches and the perimeter of the basketball court will also be fenced. And the intention is to have separate gates for the school and the wider community. Added to the court upgrade is also multi-purpose lighting so you'll be able to play during the day and during the night. And we have complemented all this by construction of a security hut at the entrance of the building. And it is not any little shabby security hut. We are going to give you a proper security hut, well furnished, with, with its own washroom facilities. So what more can you ask for? <laughs> Thank you. So I just want to say that, you know, we applaud your patience. I remember the, the times, you know, when the office, you know, being called, and rightly so, as, what is the status of? We get that all the time, you know, because everybody wants the project, so we understand that. But I just wanted to appreciate that for BNTF, there are processes, you know, and then the processes for the government don't make and the processes for the Caribbean Air Development Bank, because the BNTF is, you know, grant funding from the city. So we have to follow the, uh, all the protocols. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to ensure that whatever is given to you is a good product. And as much as possible, we try to give you what we refer to as a holistic product. We have gone from just a mere fencing to several components. So at the end, all will benefit. So again, this background, I just I can only hope that you will truly appreciate and care for what will be given to you. And we look forward to this wonderful working relationship and to the community enjoying all the benefits. Thank you very much. At this point, it is my honor and privilege to call to the podium in his capacity as the parliamentary representative for the Roseau Valley constituency, Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre.
to give you a few remarks, Dr. Martin. Today is a good day. It's a good afternoon. Things happening for us. And um, I'm really happy and very proud to be here today to just be part of all of this ceremony that we're having here today. We, Mont Prosper, we're not only lucky, but Mont Prosper has been blessed in the sense that we have two of the BNTF projects. As a matter of fact, the water project is the biggest BNTF project, and it happens to be for Mont Prosper. So we're very happy about this. But today we're going to focus on our primary school security and sports upgrade. And um, as was mentioned, it includes the entire fencing of the compound and also separate fencing for the court with separate gates for both the students and the public that they have access to the court as well. But it goes beyond just the fencing. It's all about the lighting and um, for the courts as well. So now and then we always have an excuse why we can't exercise because we come home late. So with lighting, people will have access to the court even in the evening to take part in their sporting activities. Besides the fact that the court itself is going to be an NBA standard court with all the requirements of, that the NBA has, the criteria, whether it's the surfacing, the marking, and the size of the boards and the rim. So it's basically not just a court, but it's a court of the latest dimensions and the latest um, technology used in the court. Even the surfacing of the court will be different. Even the markings of the court will be different. So all this is in keeping in tune with the development that is taking on. So it's not just a court, but it's a, a state-of-the-art court, the latest court that we can possibly have. The idea also that they have lighting for the court, it brings in another aspect for sporting, not only Mont Prosper, but for the entire Roseau Valley. Because remember, you used to have the Roseau Valley Basketball League, which was one of the biggest leagues in the island. And um, I remember Mont Prosper playing in that league as well. So if we have a court of that standard, the games wouldn't only be in Trafalgar, but the games can be in Mont Prosper as well. And the games can be in the evening, and that can also even bring more economic development to the village of Mont Prosper. So it's a bigger picture. It's not just a court, it's what a court can bring with it. So it brings some economic advantages with it as well. But the entire fencing of the compound provides safety for our teachers and our students as well, which is of prime importance, the safety of our teachers and our students. And then you have to look at it. When I was in high school, my physics teacher would say academics and sports goes together. So if we have our sporting complex right on our academic structure, that makes a very comprehensive approach to developing a unified and a proper individual. It's not just books alone, but sports have to be part of it. So, and I see the principal nod ahead. I think she agrees with me on that one. And besides also, just the mere fact that we have it fenced, it's a, it's a more controlled environment so that um, it's not just a walkthrough. We know if we have students here, they must be safe, they must be secure. So that, that gives a level of comfort to all the parents in that area. When they send their kids to school, they feel more comfortable that yes, their children are in a safe environment, a safe environment for them to study and to function as well. And then later down, there's a much bigger picture for sports because this court is just the stepping stone it's like an incubator where we start to just produce more and more because obviously the future is one prospect, basketball, sports. I'll discuss the playing field at another time. Work is going on there. There's so much going on in one prospect, but I have to leave myself to just this little activity here this afternoon. And, um, but the whole thing about the school and the sports is we have to recognize that it's not just sports for sporting sake. We have to see what sport brings with it. And it's in our school compound, because as I said, by the age of 14, you always hear on TV, girls drop out of sports twice as much as boys. So it's not just sporting for our boys, but it's sporting for the girls as well. So when the girls reach 40 and 50, we don't want them to only know rounders. They can know some stuff besides rounders when they reach that age, whether it's basketball, football, and all the different sporting activities that can take place. But it's important when we put that emphasis on sports because also it's um, to help our youth develop in terms of their self-confidence, their stress management. It's also a place to relax. You come in the afternoon and people play sports and they get to talk and they get to interact and share ideas. So it's, it's a much bigger process than just a court, as I've been saying all along. And um, so it's an academic structure combined with our sporting structure, which gives us uh, a very comprehensive approach to our development. But later on, we'll also be coming back here 
for our Mon Prosper water supply project, which is, um, as I said, the biggest of all the BNTF projects, actually $2.35 million. And um, that will include our 30 gallon reinforced concrete tanks and our pump station from Wharton Wave. And those of us from Mount Prosper, we know the little issues we have during the dry season as regards to water. And we know what happens when we have the heavy rainfall as well. Just the whole topography of the valley in terms of the, just the rain and how things are. Every now and then we get a little sediments in the water. So I think the village on the whole, we're really happy that this project will be coming through. So it's a BNTF project and we're pretty happy about that. That will involve all the tanks and the resilience of the project, meaning that it's a resi um, concrete, reinforced concrete tank that we're going to have. It means a lot to us as well. All the pumping stations from Wharton Haven and also the laying of the pumping lines and the distribution of the line upgrade as well. So, and we have to consider these things and you have to see the importance of, that the government gives to such things like water. Because as I said before, we treat water like a right. It's not just something we should take for granted. There are other Caribbean islands that in their rural areas, only 50% have pipe bond water. So if you compare this to what we have here in Dominica, I think we should be very proud of ourselves, the sort of water system that the government is investing in. And it's not just water because it's water, but it's water for, in terms of hygiene, in terms of health, in terms of agriculture. It's a comprehensive approach. So when the government invests such in our health and our sports, and you can see our roads getting done, it's just better things to come. So it's not the beginning of things, it's actually the continuation of things that's going on in Mount Prosper. And for this, we're really happy about that. And, um, but the bottom line comes in, in that we have to play our part, and we have to be part of that development. So if the education is provided, if the sporting facility is provided, if the roads are provided, if the water is provided, what left is for us to make use of those different things that the government is giving us so that we can develop ourselves. The government cannot do it alone. They're playing uh, their part and they're providing everything for us, the people of Mount Prosper. So we have to play our part and make use of those things so that we can develop ourselves as a community. And it can only be done together when we do everything together. So having said this, I really appreciate and I'm really grateful and thankful to the Ministry of Community Development and the BNTF projects that um, have singled out Mount Prosper for two great projects like this. We're definitely going to make use of this, and um, you'll see in the future, we hearing about different sporting activities in Mount Prosper. You'll, you'll hear a lot about us, and that's the only way we can show how much we appreciate it. You'll see the development that can come from these interventions, and um, we, we'll be proud of this, and you can be proud of us that we definitely make use of those interventions in the future to come. But let me say a special thank you to the Prime Minister for making graceness of his presence here this afternoon, and he has a very busy schedule, and when the Prime Minister heard Mount Prosper, he was more than eager to come to Mount Prosper, so PM, we really thank you for coming to Mount Prosper this afternoon. I thank everyone for attending, thank you so much. At this time, we will hear the, uh, the remarks of the Minister responsible for Sports, Culture and Community Development, Honorable Rosalind Paul. I call you to the podium, Honorable Paul. Today, this is this afternoon, it's our fourth signing ceremony. So we are signing a number of contracts for six projects this week, and hopefully the largest project which is the seventh project, the water supply for Bon Prosper, we should be signing in a couple of weeks' time. Through the Basic Needs Trust Fund, the government of Dominica has been making serious investments towards poverty alleviation and upliftment of communities and families around Dominica. While this what while the investments are significant, sometimes we do not pay sufficient attention to the work, effort, and positive impact of these projects on the lives of families and communities. The Basic Needs Trust Fund program has three pillars. Basic community access and drainage, enhancement of water and sanitation systems, 
education and human resource development. And this particular project is under the pillar education and human resource development. Mm -hmm. Since 1979, through these interventions by BNTF, communities are able to enjoy, improve access to water, community roads, strengthen infrastructure, improve waterways and drains, better access to community resources, improve education and training, and better access to community resources, services, health and well-being, among others. It is all about community development. And even while we sign these contracts, I realize the projects, they embrace so much. They embrace sports, they embrace education, they embrace culture, they embrace um, drainage. Um, and they are also built with, or pro, I'm sorry, resilience is built into the projects. So the projects I realize as we implement are in keeping with our vision for ensuring resilience, getting us closer to the goal of making Dominica the first climate resilient country in, Domini in the world, sorry. For example, on the BNTF 7, government spent $8.3 million towards nine sub-projects that benefited nine communities within six districts in Dominica. So that tell you, BNT, tells you BNTF um, work or projects are benefiting several communities across the country. Under BNTF 8, government invested $2.5 million, and this was spent for three sub-projects in three communities across three districts. And one of those projects was in my own constituency in Kalibishi. And this week, as I said, for BNTF 9, we are signing contracts six for seven projects, six being done this week, and to a tune of $5.3 million. And as earlier stated, the seventh project and largest project will be signed in a few weeks. So while we are here today, for a half million dollar project, over half a million dollar project, we will be back shortly to um, offer more benefits to the community of Bon Prospect. And when we think of the impact of the project, we cannot only think of just the dollars and cents, which is also significant. $500,000 or more is a significant investment in, your, in fencing, in ensuring the security of our school, the security of our children, to protect the school and um, its resources from vandalism, to protect it from theft, the resources available. But also you heard of offer of the hard cut that will be improved and modernized and all that will come to the community because of this sports facility. And when we speak sports, we also, anytime you speak of sports, you are also speaking of youth development. And that is very important um, to the development of, of the young people of Mon Prosper, um, as they will not only be recreating, hopefully, but they can build careers around sports. So, my ministry and the government is very interested in the investment of in sporting facilities around the country, in rural communities and urban communities as well, and all geared towards the holistic development of the young people of Dominica. And so as the ministry responsible, not only for community development, but sports and culture, this project really makes me and my ministry happy. It is allowing us to do the work that we are mandated to do. So um, also one of the impacts of the BNTF um, project through its process, the BNTF always ensures the active participation of the community, the active participation of the beneficiaries so that ownership and buy-in is built into this whole process while it seeks to empower 
and build the capacity of the community. So there are the tangible benefits and there are the benefits that we do not see, but which results in improved leadership and in ensuring that because people own the project, they have a vested interest in it, then they can protect the resources that are available to the community for the project. And so we hope and we encourage you when this project comes to fruition that you as a community will ensure that it is protected, will ensure that it's maintained, and you will ensure the best utilization of this um, project here. And so I just encourage you, I am happy for you as a community, and I want to thank the Basic Needs Trust Fund um, unit for the work that it continues to do and express our commitment to continue to work towards the development of Mon Prospect and other communities across Dominica and um, to encourage communities to take advantage of the resources, the facility through the Basic Needs Trust Fund to help us, to help you to improve communities around Dominica. Thank you very much. At this moment, we have been graced with the presence of the Prime Minister and also the Minister for Finance. He is the one that makes things happen with all his signature on endorsements of the projects. We can go nowhere, so it is very fitting indeed to have the Honourable Prime Minister before this afternoon and to deliver an address to you, Honourable Prime Minister. I am very happy to be here to celebrate with you. This is indeed a celebration. And when these things happen to us in challenging times, we should be even more grateful for it. Uh, we see what's happening around the world, you know. Uh, this COVID-19 has created uh, tremendous challenges uh, for every country, every country in the world, big and small, rich and poor, middle income, low income, high income, um, third world, first world, whatever world you don't call it. Every country has been impacted by this. And the, uh, the World Health Organization is saying to us um, that they anticipate that they expect this virus to be first for at least the next two years. Um, so if we're waiting for December to come, hoping that, you know, uh, when we celebrate the resurrection of, well, Christ's birthday, um, that it go away, that's not what the experts in, in this world are telling us. And the longer this stays with us in, the, in this world, the more challenging it can become. Um, because you see, Thousands of people have lost their jobs, or millions, you know, have lost their jobs. Um, just recently, you saw a number of huge airlines um, releasing people, making them redundant because no flights, um, and therefore, no need to keep all of the staff. Hotels, there are some guests in the hotels in, in the world, but people are not traveling. Um, and, and if people do not have money, they can't travel, and people don't have money to pay the rent, they've been evicted. Um, in, in these countries. And it's not like us here in Dominica where you have to go for a whole long process before somebody gets you evicted. In, 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 in big countries like the United States, it's very, very simple. And once the court orders, then the police will come knock on your door and, and, and force you out. And, and that's the coldness of, of, of this action sometimes. Um, but we must be grateful that um, in this period, the, the Lord blesses us with, with access to some funds that we can help communities and help families uh, to see us through this challenging, this challenging period. And as the minister indicated, you know, we had, uh, we've had some signing ceremonies today with the um, Dominican Association of Persons with Disabilities, over a million dollars contract signed today. Um, yesterday we were in, um, in Grand Four, about 100 and, or 1.5 or 1.3 million dollars signed there for some drainage works. Um, tomorrow we're going to to Castle Bruce at 2 p.m. We have a contract to upgrade the school facilities there in the sum of $632,000 and will be signed. And then in the afternoon at 4 p.m. we're going to Woodfordville um, for the upgrade of the playing field there in Woodfordville at a sum of $742,500. And, and today we're here in Mount Prospect, 
you know, on um, signing a contract for $548,246.07. Um, that is to upgrade the school, and those of us know one plus one is a big school, with plenty of people in it. Um, so that in itself is a, is a massive investment. The government could have said, and BNTF could have said, well, look, it's a small school, people are making penetration, one plus one, so on. let us spend the money somewhere else. But we understand and appreciate as a government the importance of a school facility in small communities. And no matter how small the population of the school is, we treat the schools as if it was a massive school and so forth. Because education is important, access to education is important, and we to ensure that we can, we can have um, these school plants upgraded. And as Mr. Card indicated, recognizing that this is also a shared facility with regards to the basketball court and um, the necessary um, arrangements have been made to allow the community to have access to the, um, the, the facility, but primarily during school hours, it will be for the students and staff. And, and so this is an important ceremony for us, and you know how much money we've spent. Now we're getting calls from the residents of Mount Prospect to put speed bumps in Mount Prospect. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Speed bumps. Guys racing there because the road's smooth. <laughs> Um, and this has come at a significant cost by the government. Um, you know, I, I said to the, the former power up and the current power up, you know, maybe we could have given everybody in Mount Prosper some money for their homes and relocate them because the amount of money we spend on, on this road just, just to cut a mountain about $5 million, a terrace. Just, just to do the excavation, to stabilize the slope, $5 million. And an additional two or three million dollars for the retaining walls and for the resurfacing and only now two sections that are remaining to be to be completed and i have told the power to call the minister of public works so that we can do this small hill there um, and so you have you've been able to drive from mont prosper to capuchin um, in the next couple of weeks without one pothole on your own and i'm saying these things to remind us because something we take this into granted um, we think it's no granted, but constructing roads in Dominica and bridges is certainly more costly than any country in the Caribbean because of our terrain. Sometimes I, I, I envy these this flat countries in the Caribbean because I would say my, I, my, my work would have been easier and so on. Uh, you know, when I, we have to do these roads and you're talking about uh, millions and so forth for small communities, this is why in the past, these things were not done because government had to decide what is, people would determine what they invest based on the economic, economies of scale. So even the water project that we've done work before in this, in, in, in to improve it, but there needs for the improvement. So, and the only reason why we're not signing this contract today because the cost has increased. Um, and so in the next two weeks, God's willing, uh, we will conclude on the contractual process and we'll be back here immediately after to sign this contract. I've been told it might be close to or more than $2 million. No matter how much we pay to our school, we'll never be making money any time soon. And so these are what we call social investments because water is important and access to water is important. Um, but people believe that because you have 365 rivers that they, they claim and and water should be cheaper and so on. The fact is, we're not paying half of what we should be paying for water in Normandy. So the water that we receive in our pipes are highly subsidized by the government. Highly subsidized by the government. You know, and, and, and we do so to ensure that people can have access to, to, to this. So we've seen some major investments in, in Mount Prosper, um, you know, in the infrastructure, which is so important. Um, this, the school, the sporting facilities, these things are important. Our hope and prayer, as the as your power have indicated, is that we'll make use of it. Sometimes I go to communities that will complain, oh, who's carried away the playing field, who's carried away the basketball court. Then we get in the playing field, we spend over a million dollars, 1.5 million dollars on these facilities, and then nobody uses it. It's not maintained. For them to play, they have, the government has to go and cut the grass. So we have to take ownership in this country of these facilities. We're not doing it for ourselves because I'm, my house is all the way in Vegas and so on. So this investment is for the people of Mount Prospect, the residents of Mount Prospect. And therefore, you must take ownership of it. You must, you must guard it. You must protect it. You must vandalize it. 
um, because this is an investment. Because if you, if you mash it up and we have to come to fix it, it means therefore this, we're taking money that we could do something else for your families and for the communities to repair something that could have been avoided. And, and, and so we have, to, we have to appreciate this. Um, and of course, we are grateful to the government of Canada. Most of the funds uh, on BNTF come from the government of Canada for the, for the, for the CDB. And of course, there's counterpart funding from the government. And we have had a very uh, beneficial uh, relationship with BNTF over the years, impacting lives and impacting communities and impacting the whole of, whole of Dominica. The other thing I'd like to draw to the attention of yourselves, and of course I recognize that this is being carried live, is in regards to COVID-19 and the protocols that the government has put in place to allow people to come into our country. You know, we've, we've always asked the citizens of Dominica, we've always cautioned ourselves against encouraging or being, being involved in this illegal entry into Dominica. This backdoor arrangement in Dominica must stop. We are placing ourselves, our families, and the entire country at risk. When we come into the country, we do not know that you're there, and then you have COVID-19. And you're roaming the, the, the streets, and you're and you roaming the bars and, the, and, and everywhere else. What could have happened then? You know, thank God we were able to identify and capture and test and this guy. You know, because if, if, if we have... Uh, surge of cases in Dominica, we have to close the borders. We now have to go back to restricting people's movements and activities. And the point is, if we do not understand the, 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 the critical nature of this, then many of us who have jobs today and who, uh, who are able to pay our mortgages or rent, I give you the assurance, if we shut down the country again, you will not have a job. So this has to be a national effort. It's not about the Minister for Health or the government alone. All of us must play our part. And so you cannot have someone in your house knowing that person came in illegal and you're not calling the police. Or you're not telling that person go to and get tested. We have to, we have to speak out against this thing. This is not political. We must never see, always see things from this narrow political perspective. This is our country. This is about our welfare, our well-being, our safety. And so we have to speak about this as a nation and so on, because that could have created serious problems. Now we have to find out which boat it came on, who were the people on the boat, where they are, contact tracing, testing. And you can imagine if maybe seven of them were on the boat, and they all go to seven different communities, and they all have COVID-19. So you see what the government has to be dealing with every day. This is not, we're not, this government is not about watching Netflix, you know. This is, this is serious business. This is serious business. So, but I'm happy to be here at One Prosper. I wanted to come to One Prosper um, because you're wonderful people, and, and I'm hoping that we can continue to work together. Um, the extraordinary um, um, partnership that we've had with the council, chaired by yourself, ma'am. You, the, the people of Mount Prosper, this generation and future generations will be grateful to you um, for the leadership that you show in the council and your councillors, because it's important that there be a, a, a tight relationship between central government and local government authorities. And this government has an unenviable track record, unparalleled track record, of empowering councils to implement a number of projects and programs in, at the constituency level, at the village level. And without the government, central government's investments in the council, I mean, you guys can sell all the little butter cake you want and a little barbecue, you will never make money to do anything in the community. And so, and, and I always say that councils are usually more efficient than government in delivering on projects, so I like using councils to get things done in the community. And so I'm happy for you, you know, I want to, um, to, to say to you, let us appreciate those things. Um, you know, we have to be grateful to the Lord for what we have and for what we do not have. And we must never look at the glass half empty. We must always look at the glass half full. And each of us must make a contribution. Put our own drop of water into the glass and get it to the brim and let it overflow. And you can only do these things by being constructive, by being positive about yourself, about your country, and about the future of your country. If we have a negative perception for some stupidness called politics and so forth and so on, 
and we have a negative view of our country and we want to do everything to undermine our country, who do you think is going to get affected? You know, it's, it's, as, as it's saying, because you, you're in a boat together. If you start puncturing, puncturing and, and, and putting holes in the boat and we're in the middle of the ocean, you think? Maybe one or two of us might be able to stream might survive. But what about the vast majority of us? Because this is the only place we'd ever be able to call home, Dominica. For the majority of us. Yes, you can get your green card and go American son and you get a traffic ticket and Mr. Trump will send you back to Dominica. And you come back to Dominica. So you always have to do what is good for your country. Be constructive. The small, the little things that we can do, when we put it together, it can make a huge difference to all of us in Dominica. These are trying times, but these are not times for us to lose hope. These are times for us to uh, have greater confidence in our abilities. Greater confidence in our abilities. And we have health, center, health centers being built, hospitals being built, schools being built. We have major infrastructural projects, $126 million um, for, for one roadway in Dominica. If, you, if the country was flat, we could build roads in the whole of the country, $126 million. Just touching two constituents is $126 million. And another 32 or so million dollars building two regional um, hurricane shelters, one in Castle Bruce and one in Jimmy. And several um, um, hundreds of homes are being built, dozens of homes are being built um, for the people of Dominica to ensure that all of us can be in a safe environment. So there, there are a lot of posit positive things happening, um, you know, uh, and we will continue to be blessed with these opportunities and we thank God for that. I really want to, to say to you, I'm very happy for you. Um, I'm sure the principal there who I've known for a long time is, is happy um, for this, you know, just when you the, you were fixing the water wave of primary school, they must have transferred you to here and, and, and see that. So, so I, I, I think your um, blessings follow you, you know, so, so um, and of course we've done a, a, a tremendous job in, in, in one prospect there. We, I'm sorry, what in Waverly with, with the primary school? We're building a massive um, um, community center in Trafalgar. You know, things you only see in England and America. Well, not every part of America. Yeah? In, in the bigger cities, you see that and so on. Um, so a lot of positive things happen in the, in the, in the constituency. Let us continue to work together. And together, we can, we can certainly um, address all the little challenges that we have. If we work, if we work as individuals, nothing going to happen to us. But if we work together, we can certainly make a huge difference. So I want to, to, to say I look forward to this. I've been told that the project will take about three months, so um, three months will come very quickly and you will appreciate the, the, um, the, the benefits of this. But you can only um, really see the benefits by one, showing gratitude for it, and two, um, taking care of it. Thank you very much and God bless you.